But then I came across the booth for Cisco and uh, basically made my case right there on the spot. I think it was a, a Saturday. It might have been a Friday, but right there on the spot, they told me your interview is on Monday. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I got a job at Cisco with absolutely no technical background. I see a lot of people putting up videos about how they got a job at Google or what they like about working at Google or other companies, but I don't really see any for Cisco. Before I get into that though, um, I do want to mention that I have my CCIE, so I will talk about how I became a Cisco employee with zero technical background. And I will make another video where I talk about my, my journey from day one at Cisco all the way up to having my CCIE. I think it's appropriate to give some background about myself. Um, growing up, I liked to play video games, but that was about as much as I did that was technical. And that's, that's not even technical. Let's be honest. Um, I didn't, I messed around on the internet a little bit, like maybe downloaded music or whatever. Uh, but really did, did nothing technical. I went into the military. I didn't go to college after high school. I went into the military and even there in the military, I know there are technical jobs at Cisco. I actually work with a lot of people that were in the military doing technical things while they were serving. I, on the other hand, worked with ordnance, which is, you know, bullets and ammunition, stuff like that. Again, absolutely nothing technical. I really didn't have any intentions of going to college, but while I was in the military, I was looking at a sign on, this, on, on somebody's door. They had printed off a graph and the graph was income based on education. And once you saw the part about college education, the, the amount of income significantly increased. So I started thinking like, Hey, you know, it hasn't really been anything I'm concerned with, but maybe I should start thinking about college. But even, even when I did start taking college courses, I didn't go to the technical route. I took classes in psychology. I took some classes in Spanish and history nothing technical. And that was all out while I was still in the military. And eventually I even changed jobs in the military. And again, I didn't do anything technical. So I get out of the military. And at this point, I go to college full time. And the plan was to go back in the military as an officer. So I studied political science. Politics has nothing to do with Cisco. In fact, uh, most of the people that I meet at Cisco who have their degree are electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, um, people who studied chemistry, physics, things of that nature. I don't think I've ever met another Cisco employee that has a political science degree. And... As you already know, since I work at Cisco, my plan to go back in the military changed. And uh, eventually I got married. And near the end of my time at college, at NC State, I, uh, my wife, I was talking to her about an engineering job fair. And I was saying, you know, I'm really not too sure if I want to go to this engineering job fair, given that. I don't have an engineering background. And um, we knew that Cisco was going to be there. So by the time that graduation came about, I'd met enough people that worked at Cisco that it became something of interest to me. And I started talking to them about what their job at Cisco is. And most of them worked in tech, in the Cisco Technical Assistance Center. So I started talking to them about what do you do day in and day out. And, um, you know, I started listening to the items that they were providing 
and making comparisons to what I did in the job that I had while I was in school. So that I, I could go to the engineering job fair and say, look, I don't have a technical background, but here's what I can bring to the table. Here's what I learned with my political science degree that I think would make me successful in, in, in Cisco. And then on top of that, the job that I had at the time, I was helping people with um, receiving basically money each month that they would use to pay their mortgage on their house. But sometimes they wouldn't get the money and they were coming in the office face to face with me. It wasn't over the phone. It wasn't over WebEx. I had people coming through the door that I had to deal with that were very, very, very aggravated um, because they weren't able to pay their bills. So I already could bring that to the table as well, that I'm able to deal with those types of situations of an aggravated customer who is significantly being impacted by a situation that they believe, um, you know, in some way I'm almost responsible for it. So the day comes of the job fair and I show up and I talked to a lot of different companies and they all seem to be going pretty well. But then I came across the booth for Cisco and uh, basically made my case right there on the spot. I think it was a, a Saturday. It might have been a Friday, but right there on the spot, they told me your interview is on Monday. So it's in person and I show up in a suit and tie and sit down to talk to this gentleman from Cisco and the conversation starts out with so political science what's up with that and I flat out acknowledged it I said I know that's not a traditional background for the type of work that the company does and I basically just did my spiel again about here's what I can bring to the table that I think would make me successful at Cisco then uh after that interview, I got another one, and most of the people that get hired at the same time as me, I believe only did about three interviews, and I guess they really needed to bet me because I did about, I don't know, six, six or so interviews. Well, by the time that I was interviewing, you know, I didn't have enough time for the first interview, but as the process was going, people, you know, I would ask them like, is there anything that before the next interview I could learn? to kind of make myself stand apart. And they started giving me information, like learn the OSI model, learn about ARP, learn, um, you know, what's the point of a switch? What What is a layer three switch? What does a router do? And I was watching tons of YouTube videos. I made a huge, a humongous stack of note cards. And I was constantly going through the note cards. All the while, you know, finalizing my time in college, you know, doing my, um, final projects and all of that stuff, but I wanted the job. So I put in the effort, I put in the time and even in uh, maybe about like the fourth interview or so, um, one of the people had mentioned to me that they thought it was pretty cool that I had no technical background. And at the same time, I have no job offer. The job was not mine. And I was already learning the information. I was already showing um, a will to learn and some drive. And along with all of that, there was there was also some luck in terms of timing. Cisco had recently started a program that at, at the point in time was called SAP, Services Associates Program, I believe. Um, and it was, it was basically a training program that they would bring people in. Uh, most of the people there were either, either technical a little bit already. Maybe they had their CCENT. Maybe they had their CCNA. Some of them had CCMPs. Uh, were working towards their CCIEs. But there were also a lot of other folks that uh, didn't have much technical background. However, they did have the com like computer science degrees, but they didn't know computer networking, right? So they were new to that side of it. Um, there was another person there with me who was a mechanical engineer. So he didn't know too much uh, computer science type of stuff, programming and all of that, nor did he know the uh, networking side of things. So he was a little bit in the same boat as me. And uh, we actually had a lot of the same career progression and learned a lot of the same stuff together at the same times. 
Now, that program was a wonderful program. I learned a lot. I got certified while I was in that program. Not my CCIE, but I did get some other cert certifications. And um, I, when I make the video about my CCIE journey, going from nothing all the way up to CCIE, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that program because I do think people need to know about it. They need to know that there are ways into Cisco that um, are, are extremely, extremely valuable not only for getting a job at Cisco, but because you get there and they teach you, you learn on, on the clock, right? So you get paid to learn this stuff um, before you actually go on to working on a team. And I don't want to come across wrong, like as if it wasn't difficult. It, I mean, it was, it, there were some people that did not make it through the program. It was a very, very steep learning curve, but uh, I put in the time, I put in the effort and I made my way through the program and, and continued to excel. The other good thing about Cisco is the culture. There's there's a lot of people that are ready and willing and want to help you. They like to share what they know and share what they've learned and, and build up the team and mentor people. And that's, uh, you know, a, a video that I might make uh, about a day in the life of a Cisco TAC engineer. And what is it like? Who do you work with? Um, what stuff do you do other than just working on cases? So I could probably do a video on that as well. But in terms of how I got a job at Cisco uh, without any technical background, that, that's really what it all comes down to. Um, I showed up at the job interview. I had a resume that I, I took that resume to everybody who would ever read it. I would go to job fairs and ask them to read. I, I would not leave the job fair until I found the table where people review your resume. And I would get my re resume tweaked again and again and again. So by the time that I had put it in front of somebody from Cisco, that resume had been tweaked by people that are tweaking several resumes day in and day out. Um, and I it had been tweaked again and again. So I think that was helpful. Uh, that was part of it. I brought a resume with me. I showed up uh, in, 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 you know, presentable attire, clean shaved face, had a nice haircut and was ready to talk and was ready to say what value I bring to the table and acknowledge the fact that I had some shortcomings that I was more than willing to work on. And then I also got the luck of Cisco having a program that um, was meant for people that didn't know how Cisco networking worked, how, how Cisco's equipment um, was supported or, or just computer networking in general, don't know the OSI model. Um, so that helped out a lot as well. So at the end of the day, th those are the ingredients. Uh, show up, be presentable, and apply yourself and be ready to, to actually work, be ready to you know, ask people for advice and execute against their advice. If you have any questions or you want to know other information, feel free to comment below. Um, and, and if I feel it's a question that is appropriate and one that I can answer without being unprofessional, then, um, you know, I, I'll take the time to reply. Maybe other people, if I'm not, if I'm not getting around to it, maybe some other people that uh, have the same experience as me can come along and speak to you whatever your questions are. Thanks for watching.